With solo game development being such an absurdly time-consuming activity, it's easy to want to take shortcuts and skip out on prototyping. Prototyping is one of the most vital pre-production steps to make sure that your game has a chance at succeeding. Rosebud AI has reached out to me and asked me to showcase their AI software, which will help you dramatically speed up the time of prototyping using its text prompt to game generation system. So in this video, I'm going to put Rosebud AI to the test and find out if it really can make the prototyping process for us solo game developers faster and easier. All right, so I have Rosebud AI here and I'm going into this completely blind. We're going to try to see just what this thing can actually do. So part of my idea here is I want to see if it can go through the progression that you would usually tell a new indie game developer, like make a simple game and then make a more complicated game. And so maybe let's, let's just start simple and do something like Pong, a simple 2D game where the player controls a paddle, moving it up or down, the ball bounces between the player's paddle and the opponent's paddle. Let's see if it does it. 2D. All right, we're cooking. Let's see how this goes. I can see here that it also has sections for assets, and I wonder if code is kind of generated separately in scripts or if it's all just one big thing. Okay, so it picks up on the fact that I'm trying to do Pong. So it's building the paddle, building the AI. Okay, cool. But I wonder if it's like, are these all separate scripts or how does it organize this? It's also automatically, I didn't say anything about game juice, but it also has decided that it wants to do that, which I think is appreciated, but if I'm doing a prototype, I might not also want that. So um, maybe the way to get around that is to explicitly tell it that like we we're, we're trying to keep this super, super simple and, and just not do any game juice or anything like that. Okay, this is now the prototype. So it's added a whole bunch of graphical assets. I'm guessing it probably generates this. The ball just hit, okay, I can't go down there. There are a couple kinks in this. So I guess whenever you try to make something with AI, you always have to do a couple iterations no matter what. And so in this case, uh, a couple of the things that it has kind of got wrong here is that the scores aren't going up uh, and I don't seem to be able to actually deflect the ball and the scoring areas seem to be deflecting. Uh, deflecting the ball. So let's see how easy it's going to be for this thing to correct its mistakes here. It looks like the ball bounces off the scoring areas instead of incrementing the score, re-instantiating the ball in the center. Also, it appears that the paddles don't actually bounce the ball or collide. Let's make sure they do. Let's see how this goes. I like that they have these tips here while it loads and you can kind of get a better idea. Uh, of how this software is supposed to work. Okay, so does this work now? No, no problem. Let's just tell it uh, this seems to have had no effect. Let's start by make, let's just do it one step at a time. Let's start by making sure that when the ball hits the boundary behind one of the two players, it respawns in the center of the play area. Let's just start with that. Yeah, this is good too, to be able to roll back um, previous versions of the game. I can look at the code base here. I okay, so this is all JavaScript. Okay, cool. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, now there's errors, but I think we're onto something here. Oh wait, hang on. There's an actual uh, fix it function. Let's just try that. So it understands it by saying that's a, that type error is a classic issue. It happened because the score manager class had properties and methods with the exact same names. Uh, name collision. Is that true? Well, let's see if it, it works, if it fixes it. All right, but it looks like something has changed here. Now the, the ball is moving at a little bit of a slower velocity. That's fine. We can probably tweak that. Uh, let's see what happens when it hits the score. Okay. So it, it does go past, but then we still have this issue of player score. Okay. Let's try to fix it again and see what happens. So the goal of this right now isn't to make it perfect necessarily. You just want to make sure that it can make something good enough to be a prototype. So for example, there's some errors that we don't really care about. Like we don't care if the paddle has like a jittery motion because we're just trying to prototype this thing and trying to get that bare minimum functionality to work. So as more of these errors come up, we're just going to keep on fixing them and try to see what happens. And then if it gets really bad, we're just going to try to restart, like start from scratch, start again. Um, but okay, looks like it actually did work this time. So hopefully we can get this thing to test this properly. Okay, there we go. That worked, that's awesome. There's a little pause there, that makes sense. So this is the jittery motion I was talking about. We're not really like too concerned about that. You would be for your final version, but remember, you know, for your final version, you're gonna be modifying this uh, severely. So now the problem is that it works on the opponent's side, but when it comes to my side, uh, it doesn't actually, it doesn't actually mo uh, modify the opponent's score. How did it get to my side? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell it, I'm gonna start off by doing the paddles to do the collision so that it actually bounces off. So let's try that now. When the ball hits the player's paddle, it needs to bounce off in the opposite 
direction. What I'm gathering from this is that you probably want to build the game sort of step by step, so you'll probably want to, instead of being like, here's the full conception of the game I want to make, it's probably going to make a lot more sense to tell it like, hey, we'll start with this feature, create this player controller that can walk with like WASD and look around with the camera. Okay, now that you've created that, let's modify things, let's give it like a weapon or whatever. Um, okay, so it looks like it's not bouncing off from what I saw there. Okay, well, let's make it even more simple and strictly do the uh, the opponent's paddle. Ball is not bouncing off the opponent's paddle. Make sure that when the ball touches, touches the opponent's paddle, it bounces off. It already has code in here about the velocity, so I think there, there's just some slight logical issue here that it needs to pick up on. It didn't work. Maybe it's a matter of, like, the area of the collision detection. If I could see when the ball bounces back and what exact uh, spe specific circumstance that happens there we go okay so it, when it bounces like into the middle of the thing from up and down it seems to happen there it just bounced back okay so the very very middle so the co it, the collision detection is working it just um it has to be the very very middle of the paddle please remove all sprites and visual assets and replace them replace everything with a black background. Paddles should be white rectangles perfectly matching their collision collision boundaries. This will just give us a better idea and I, I think it's important also for prototyping even though Rosebud clearly gives you the opportunity to use assets. I feel like it's going to be a lot more convenient and a lot more straightforward to just use the simplest possible graphics. For prototyping you want the thing to be ugly anyway just to focus on the gameplay so I think we, we should probably um, we should probably prioritize doing that. Okay, so it had a little bit of trouble with that. I mean, I, I can imagine that's a pretty big job for it to try to do. Let's just try the same exact thing again, and then if that doesn't work, I will try to change the prompt a little bit. Okay, now there's an error. Let's fix it. Hey, there we go. That actually <laughs> completely worked. Awesome. Good job. The game is now playing. Okay, but now there's another There's another error. That's fine. Uh, it seems to be pretty good at fixing these errors, actually. Um, it just takes a little bit of iteration. Some of you might be thinking, like, okay, well, it's not worth using the AI because uh, it's just going to keep on doing these errors. Now... I was beginning to think that, but come to think of it, I mean, this is still taking a lot faster than it would if I was trying to write this whole thing from scratch, uh, if it's just for a prototype. Um, yeah, there we go. That works. And I think it's a lot better now that the uh, paddles are black and white. What the heck happened there? Okay, we have to make sure that the uh, that the um, the score uh, works and that it doesn't bounce back off of the score. I'm not going to tell it to like change the behavior of the collision, like... Don't make it collide and, and go right through, but essentially getting it to understand that like you're maintaining the idea that it's colliding with the thing, but just make it logically when it collides with the the area behind the player or the opponent, then increase the score. Let's start with the uh, with the opponent. Cool. Okay, that did increment my score that time. That's great to see. Things are finally coming together. Okay, cool. And it also works for the player side. I actually didn't expect it to uh, to work for my side too, but great. That's good. Essentially, what this tells us is that the prototype is done, and since we know that this is a simple prototype, we can pretty much move on from here. Okay, cool. So the one other game that we can try to make here that I actually would like to incorporate some assets that I had worked on for is a space dogfighting game, which is a game that I started working on before I made a prototype with a different system. And I want to see if I can instead use Rosebud to kind of see what the game would look like in its totality, because I had a separate gameplay prototype and a separate visual prototype, and I never really had the chance to see my assets and my art style in action with the whole rest of the game. Create a space dogfighting game. I'm going to just keep the prompt to that and just see how creative it can get with this and how good the system's going to work on its own when it's just given kind of free reign to do whatever makes sense to it. All right, well, I'm taking damage from something. Can I fly? Oh, I see. Okay, cool. I'm in first person. Okay, cool. So I can take... Okay, nice, nice. So I'm getting surrounded by enemies here, but this is totally a 100% functional game. I'm going to change it to make me start off in third person person. But it did a really good job with this enemy AI, to be honest. Make the perspective third person. I want to see my starfighter. Cool. I do see my guy now. Um, I'm supposed to be able to move with WASD, I 
think I am, but how do I rotate? I don't like that I'm, I have to click to move the mouse. I like that it did this cool little shader around the planet. That's interesting. All right, so we're going to try to get it to overhaul the player controls now. Let's overhaul the player controls. The starfighter should move, should move forward by default since it's flying. When I press W, it should move faster. Hopefully that makes sense. That might be a weird way of wording it. Let's see what happens. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. Interesting. That's not what I had in mind, but that actually is a really cool little way of moving, way of dodging. Okay, awesome. And I can, I can totally shoot. Okay, yeah, this is great. There we go. Perfect. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Awesome. So if I wanted to be super specific, I would have been like, no, 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 I don't want it to to move like this, but I actually kind of like this now. Yeah, okay. Th yeah, this is great. This is pretty sweet. Um, so now I want to incorporate my own assets into this. Let's see how that works. Okay, so I should be able to just drag and drop my starfighter here. Okay, let's try this. Please replace the player starfighter with... Okay, and then I guess you the way that you do it is you do at and then like the name of the thing that you get out of doing this. I don't see it here. Let's see if um, it's just a preview issue and see if it actually works in the engine. Yeah, there we go. Cool. It did work. Now I just have to do the thing of uh, tweaking the sizes and stuff, which is fine. The Starfighter model needs to be flipped and make it a third of its current size. Okay, awesome. There we go. That's perfect. Rosebud was able to create fully functional game prototypes with just a few text prompts, which despite having to fix a few errors and issues here and there, which is to be expected with any AI system, it is still by far much faster than if I was to build these prototypes manually. Thanks so much to Rosebud AI for sponsoring this video. You can check them out in the description. Thank you so much for watching and God bless.